Okay, and we're back. This time we're talking about the Vestal. We're going to do a review for her in the Darkest Dungeon. Um, we're going to talk about things like her stats, her skills, her camp skills, um, her trinkets, and what teams she is good on slash partners. Um, so let's look at her stats first. Let's switch over to our spreadsheet. So uh, here's our spreadsheet. Uh, below here, you can see I uh, this is this is the Vestal um, compared to the averages of the rest of the characters in the game. You can see I extracted the Vestal specifically out of this table over here. And uh, let's go over her stats and see what she is better than other characters at and worse than other characters at, and see if we can divulge anything from these stats, like about what her role is. So we can see here HP is just about average. Um, dodge is below average. Her speed is below average, just a little bit. Um, her crit, notably, is one of the worst in the game. She's actually tied with the Antiquarian and the Leper for worst crit in the game. Uh, and her damage range is below average. 7 to 14 is below the average of 8 to 15. So you can tell right away from these two stats she's not a good damage dealer. She's got below average stun. I mean, I mean, this is average stun resist. Average blight resist. Disease resist is average. Move resist is average. She has notably higher bleed resist than the rest of the roster. Um, debuff resist is below average. I mean, I mean that's average. Never mind. Uh, and trap disarm is actually 70% is... Oh, yeah, that's the main average. Um, she's got forward one and move back one. So, all in all, we can see she's not very durable. She's got um, just overall below average defensive stats. Um, she's got below below the na the natural average of 96 um, blight resist, but notably above bleed resist. These are this is an okay dot resist spread, but overall I don't think she's very durable. Uh, she's got below average speed, which is sad for healer, and she's got poor damage dealing capabilities because she has a poor crit and below average damage. So. These stats look horrible. Oh, and she has poor movement. This is really bad if she gets shuffled in position one where she doesn't work at all. Um, and so she has to take two turns before she gets back into her optimal positions of three and four. And so these are horrible stats. These are horrible, horrible stats, actually. This, this character is so far away from... Well, not so far away, but it's decently far away from what I want out in terms of a stat spread. So why do we run her? And we can get into that as we talk about her skills, which is coming up right now. Got the Vestal skills, and uh, this is my optimal spread for her. Um, this is my optimal skill layout for her. Uh, let's talk about each skill though, and let's see why this is the best. So, Mace Bash. This is a skill that's launchable pos from positions one and two, and targets positions one and two on the opponent's side. Basically, what I want to say about this move is it sucks. Um, you need to run a position one and two Vestal in order to use it. Position 1 and 2 Vessels are really bad. They don't deal damage. This has a poor crit mod on top of it. And the crit mod that's... The base crit mod on the Vessel is already really bad. It gets a bonus versus Unholy. But Unholy is in the runes. And that's one of the easiest um, areas anyway. So it's not really doing anything. This this skill is also has poor accuracy. Everything about it is just wrong. Don't use this skill. Judgment, however, is one of... The better skills on the Vestal, and I would suggest running this almost all the time. It has the same accuracy problem as Mace Bash, with 105 accuracy only. It also has a negative 25% damage modifier, so it does get hampered a bit in terms of how it deals damage, how much damage it deals. Um, but it does have a decently good crit mod. Um, it has 14%, which is one every roughly 7 hits. That's bearable, because... The Vestal actually is just a healer t most of the time anyway, so being able to deal damage in any f any way, shape, or form through crits or anything is great. Um, judgment, however, is is specifically, and I recommend running Judgment specifically for this reason alone. Uh, oh, it also self-heals for five, right, uh, on, on the Vestal. And I specifically recommend running Judgment because it has two roles for stress healing the Vestal. The first role is if you crit with Judgment, which is a one out of seven chance, like I mentioned before, uh, you get stress healed. And the self-heal portion of this skill also has a chance to heal the Vestal. And uh, on self-heal, since this is a single target self-heal, it's a 12% chance to crit heal the Vestal. 
So you not only have a 14% uh, chance to crit and deal more damage and stress heal yourself, but on top of that, you also have a 12% chance to double that healing that the Vestal takes and stress heal yourself at the same time. This skill is very good for keeping the Vestal alive in terms of stress. And one of the main things about the Vestal, one of the main ways, one of the main things that can go wrong for a Vestal is when she gets afflicted, there's potential for her to stop healing the rest of your team. And so you want to avoid affliction as much as possible with the Vestal. It is very, very important that you avoid affliction with the Vestal because she's keeping the rest of your team alive. So if she was to stop healing in any way, shape, or form, whether it be stuns, affliction, or being pulled up into positions one and two, that impacts the survivability of the rest of your team. So this skill is very good for that. Um, Dazzling Light is her next skill. This is a stun. And it's a... Oh, let me... Let, okay, the other thing is... Judgment can be launched from three and four and can hit any of the four opponents' positions. Why does this skill have Omni range? Like, being able to target any range, any rank is insane for a move, too. This is very good. Uh, but back to Dazzling Light, right? So this can be launched from positions two, three, and four and can target positions one, two, and three. Um, on the opponent's side, this is a stun, and stuns that target that are able to target position three are infinitely better than stuns that can only target positions one and two. Um, so this skill is actually amazing because it allows the Vestal when can do something very, very proactive, and that's to stun positions one, two, or three, very specifically position three, so that they don't get an action this turn. This is 110 base accuracy, very good, one of the better ones in the game. Negative 75% damage mod is not that big of a deal. Vessel doesn't deal damage. Being able to stun at 140% is very good. That's the, that's better That's better than the 130% stun of the Abomination, but worse than the 150% stuns that are above her. So, oh, and it also has a 9% chance to crit, which is the same as Judgment. Critting, every once, uh, critting once every one out of seven times is okay. Critting on stuns is pretty good because they don't really, like, that's good. I, I'll take stress heals on top of my stun. Um, it also has torch plus six, which is a is a neat way to kind of cheat out being able to save on torches a little bit. Um, you're probably going to be spamming dazzling light a lot, so I would expect that you could take one, maybe two less torches than you usually take and still be comfortable with it when you use a Vestal. Um, good skill. Very good skill. Being able to stun position three. Love that. But now we get to the first of her two healing skills called Divine Grace. Um, Divine Grace heals uh, any... Okay, it can be launched in positions three and four and can heal any of the four positions on your team. Eight to nine. That is such a huge heal. Eight to nine. The average the average health, if you remember from the spreadsheet a few seconds ago, um, is 43. Per, 43 is the average health of the character in the game. Which means without trinkets, without buffs, or anything... Without trinkets, without quirks, the Vestal alone can already regenerate about nine, okay, eight, eight out of four, about a fifth of a, a unit's health bar in one action. Let me say that again to emphasize, for emphasis. She can regenerate a fifth of anybody's health bar using Divine Grace. And because of the single target heal, it has a 12% chance to crit. There's a 12% chance that you're doubling your heal. There's a 12% chance that you're restoring, instead of a fifth of someone's health, two-fifths of someone's health with one skill use. That is very good. This is a very good skill. Um, you, will, you will definitely want to be running a position three or four Vestal just to have access to not only Divine Grace, but Judgment. Next skill, her other heal is also very broken. And would you believe it? I think this skill is actually more broken than the other skill. It's a party heal. Divine Comfort is a party heal for 4 to 5 heal uh, HP. It can be launched from positions 2, 3, and 4 and targets the whole party, of course, and the entire party gets 4 and 5 HP. 4 and 5 HP is not as high, but being able to heal the entire party is very, very important for a lot of reasons. The main reason, though, is that if you ever find yourself on Death's Door with somebody, you can bring them off of Death's Door with Divine Comfort while also giving medical attention or like healing attention to your other characters. So, and being able to bring someone off death's door is already very important. 
um, because you don't want to be have them on death's door and roll death blow, right? But being able to heal that person off of death's door and do other things at the same time is very, very powerful. A lot of other characters in the game um, can't... Actually, no other character in the game at all can offer that same utility, being able to bring someone off of death's door while also doing something else all in one skill. Um, the closest would be the flagellant with reclaim, where you can put that reclaim onto someone uh, a turn before, and the, the reclaim buff will heal them off of death's door um, while the flagellant gets a, gets a free action on the next turn. But that, let, let, let's, not, let's talk about the flagellant. This is not about the flagellant. This is about the Vestal. Um, so the Vestal being the only character to do that, is this is very, very good and makes the Vestal amazing as a healer. Um, this, is, this is before we even talk about trinkets, right? And we're, I, I keep alluding to trinkets, but we're going to see trinkets are insane. They make the tr Vestal really, really good. Uh, let's move on to the next skill. Illumination is a position 1, 2, and 3 skill that can target any of the four ranks on the opponent's side. Um, really, when you read this, you're reading this as a position 3 skill only. Um, so if you were to ever run this, the Vestal will be locked into position 3 um, because of her other skills being very powerful in position 3 and 4. So let's evaluate it. Is, is locking her in position 3 worth it? Um, 110 base accuracy, pretty good. Damage mod of negative 75, doesn't matter, she's not a damage dealer. Being able to bypass stealth and de-stealth, that's nice. Um, I don't think it's very powerful. I, I can target the other priority target, kill them, wait for the de-stealth mechanic to wear off by itself, and then target the de-stealth. I mean, target the stealth person. I don't really value the de-stealth portion of this. So, and torch plus 10 is fine, but I don't, I don't really want to save money on torches if it costs me a whole skill slot. So really the only part left about this that we can even evaluate and say might be decent is negative 30 dodge. Um, is negative 30 dodge worth running over? Well, you're running both her heals. She's a healer. You're running both her heals no matter what. Um, the stun is, pro is probably runnable, uh, is probably the next locked in thing. So should, we, should, we should evaluate if illumination is worth running over judgment. Uh, illumination provides utility to the team in that um, being able to apply a negative 30 dodge to some of the late game enemies which have 35 dodge or 40 dodge um, you can apply that debuff to them and the, the entire team will be more likely to hit that person uh, that enemy is that worth it over double stress healing on the vestal um, like i said before the only thing that really kills your team when you have a vestal on it is the vestal getting afflicted or being unable to heal um, so I just don't think Illumination is worth the utility that Judgment brings to keeping the stress on the vessel low. Uh, I, you can run it. I, I wouldn't. Say, I wouldn't knock you for it, but I just don't recommend it. This, uh, especially since most of the time you're trinketing for accuracy on your damage dealers, you're quirking for accuracy on your damage dealers, so you really shouldn't be having dodge problems at the end. I mean, uh, accuracy problems at the end of the day no matter how high some of the dodge of the enemy goes. Um, so I just don't see use of this move. Let's move on, though. Hand of Light. We just spent a lot of time talking about why position 1 and 2 Vestal sucks over position 3 and 4 Vestal. Hand of Light is a skill that can only be launched from positions 1 and 2 and can target positions 1, 2, and 3 on the enemy side. We can go over why it sucks, but just know it really sucks, and you can skip ahead if you want. I'm going to do this really fast. 105 base accuracy sucks. Negative 50% damage mod really sucks on a character who already has a low damage uh, range. Uh, reaching position 3 is very good, but negative 50% on reaching position 3 doesn't help with damage dealing on position 3, so this skill doesn't even kill or even help a lot with stress casters in position 3. has a terrible crit mod. The buff to Unholy is really bad because Unholy is not a common um, ty enemy type. Uh, self plus 35 damage and plus 10 accuracy. Plus 10 accuracy is very good for increasing Hand of Light's accuracy, um, but the damage buff is also not that great. The first Hand of Light is going to be the hardest to land and therefore the hardest to get the accuracy buff off of. The, the first Hand of Light is also going to deal the least amount of damage. This is a backloaded damage skill, very bad compared to other front-loaded damage skills. I want my damage right away and I want it very high. This is the opposite. It puts it very far away and very low. Don't want it. Terrible skill, don't run it. Let's go on to our camp skills. Um, bless 
is the first camp skill. It is a time cost of three and has, uh, it, it buffs one companion for 10 accuracy and 10 dodge. 10 accuracy is a lot. I like buffing 10 accuracy on my characters with lower accuracy. 105s to 115s is very good. 115s to 125s is very good. 110s to 120s also is very good of an accuracy bump. Um, you'll find that uh, for certain fights like the Brigand Pounder, where you have to kill the matchman specifically, and it's a very high dodge matchman that you have to kill, um, you want to stack a lot of accuracy trinkets on your Hellion, for example, and she's just missing tiny slivers of percentage points where uh, you could miss the, the matchman still, and so buffing the Hellion with Bless on those uh, right before that fight is very, very powerful, ensuring she guarantees the hit and guarantees the kill on the matchman, which guarantees you the win on the Pounder. This is very good for the Pounder. This is very good for a lot of reasons. Being able to just buff accuracy on any of your damage dealers in general is very good. So Bless, very OP. Being able to choose which one of your damage dealers to buff is also very good for Bless. So let's move on to our next one, Chant. Um, it's a time cost of three, and this is uh, another mention of the word religious. Um, the four religious characters in the game is, are the Leper, the Flagellant, the Crusader, and the Vestal. So for these four, and obviously you, it's for what, this chant can buff a companion, so it can't buff the Vestal herself. So really you're thinking about, uh, am I running two Vestals? No, you're not. Um, that's overkill in terms of healing. So you're really running, you're really gonna think about, am I, will this skill do better if I buff a Leper, if I buff a Crusader, if I buff a Flagellant? Flagellant is notably one of the worst partners for, for a Vestal. You're probably never running a Flagellant next to a Vestal. So you can discount the Flagellant right away. Um, Leper doesn't really need these uh, buffs. They're minus stress buffs, and the Leper can handle its own stress by himself. So you're not really thinking about the Leper uh, because he has Solemnity for it. And this again, when you're bringing a Crusader, you're using him as a stress healer. So stress things don't really work. They don't really need, are not really needed on the Crusader uh, as much as it is on other characters. So you're really not using this on a Crusader most of the time. Um, when you, well, you're not really using the skill when you have a Crusader on the team most of the time. So we can discount, we can basically discount the religious section portion of each of, of the, we can discount the religious text here. And we can just look at the not religious text. And if you use this on a companion who's not religious, then you heal five stress off of them and you attack on a negative 10% stress for the next four battles. And how powerful is that for three, for a time cost of three? That is abysmally weak. This skill, this camp skill is very, very bad. It's very, very weak. I don't really recommend using this camp skill ever. There are much more powerful camp skills that cost less. For like, for example, the generic camp skill of Encourage, it costs a time cost of two and heals for 15 stress for one companion. That's 10 stress more than Chant. It costs one less to use, so it's easier to fit in. And it's just better. You would, I think I would rather use Encourage more often than I would use Chant. Let's move on to Prey, though. So let's talk about Prey in the same way, because it has um, religious text. Um, do, would we ever really use it on the three characters? Uh, Flagellant, let's, let's say Flagellant is never going to be used with a Vestal, so no, we're not using it on a Flagellant. The Leper, okay, these are, these are, this has a protection component and a stress component. So the stress component will just say we'll never use on the Leper, because he can handle it on himself. Does he want 15 protection? Leper has one of the highest base HPs in the game. He doesn't really care if you put more protection on him. Um, so this is not really useful if you have a Leper on the team. Um, does Crusader need it either? Crusader has the second highest HP in the game. So this, the protection doesn't really help on the Crusader either. So the, we, can, we can do the same thing we did with Chant and just ignore the religious section. Of, of all of these skills. And let's talk about the, the other, the, so let's talk about the non-religious portion. Oh, I, I guess at the end of the day, I, if you're gonna give me protection, more protection, I'm not gonna complain about it. I'll take the extra stats, but I, I just don't think it's really, protection is not very good stat to, to buff most of the time. Um, but let's talk about the non-religious portions of it. Oh, this buffs all companions, by the way. So you're going to get bonuses on your crusader as well as other characters or your leper and other characters so it's still it's not as uh, it's not as instantly bad as chant um, but let's talk about it so if you're not religious you take a stress heal of five and you get five percent protection um 
protection itself is not a very good stat to buff but having minimal protection having a little bit of protection having five percent for example um does reduce all of the incoming damage by at least one because incoming damage rounds down it, it floors the damage so um if you were to for example de somehow decrease a damage from dealing one to, z to dealing 0 0.95 um, it would actually floor all the way down to zero and so you would when you take uh, One damage it would instead deal you zero instead if you have five percent protection Which is the best part about prey it at least decreases the incoming damage by one um, but how much is um, Decreasing incoming damage by one when you can aoe heal everyone for about four to five without trinkets um, I just don't think that's very valuable. Um, I don't like Vestal is already the best at keeping everyone alive in the game, and so Prey doing that doesn't really help the rest of the team much. This is also a pretty bad skill for that reason. Um, so I also don't recommend using this pretty often. Let's move on to our next skill, which is Sanctuary. Time cost of four. It is a prevent nighttime ambush skill. Um, it, oh, the, I don't know why, but if religious, yeah, you're you're religious. This, the Vestal is religious, so it should just say prevent nighttime ambush. Um, and all com companions, if they're suffering mortality debuffs, they heal 50% of their HP and stress heal 25. So, how good is this skill? Um, this skill, if, you, if, if everyone's at perfect HP, if, everyone, if no one's on mortality debuffs, this skill is essentially just spend 4 to prevent nighttime ambush. Uh, if we evaluate it that way, there are other prevent nighttime ambushes in the game which actually do other things other than just prevent nighttime ambush. So this skill would be r strictly inferior to other nighttime ambush skills if everyone was on, if nobody had uh, mortality debuffs, which is very easy to do with, with the Vestal because she, she basically keeps everyone off of like even coming close to dying with these skills and trinkets. Um, so most of the time, it is a bad skill compared to other prevent nighttime ambush skills. But if for some reason, somehow, you got into a really, really tough fight, for example, maybe a shambler fight, uh, right after a shambler fight, um, or after a collector fight that you weren't prepared for, or after one of, uh, after one of the fights in Darkest Dungeon 2, um, after one of those boss fights in Darkest Dungeon 2, or after a Darkest Dungeon 3 cyst fight, if after any of those fights you, you are on Death's Door, uh, or you have recovered from Death's Door, camping and using Sanctuary is very, very powerful. It does so much. It heals you for 50% of your HP and rips off 25 stress from not just one, but all of the characters that are, that are, on, that are suffering from mortality buffs. That is so much stress heal packed into one skill. That is more stress heal than the generic camp skill of Encourage by a far margin. It's all 66% more of a stress heal. And it's not just for one companion, it's for all companions. Um, when you use this for that section of it, the mortality buff section, very, very powerful skill. Um, so I would have to say overall rating on this skill is nichely powerful, situationally powerful. Right, so the Vestal trinkets are on the screen now. And for some reason, I don't know why, the Vestal has two rare trinkets. I don't know why, she just does. As if, like, we're gonna evaluate both of them as well as the very rare trinket. Um, profane Scroll, plus 15 damage, plus 10 prot if in position two, plus 30%, 33% healing skills if in position two, plus 15% stress. So these, the, this section of this trinket is what kills it. You don't want to be running position 2 Vestal, you want to be running positions 3 and 4, so you have access to her good skills. Bad Trinket. Very powerful numbers, just not what you want to be doing with the Vestal. Her next one is Tome of Holy Healing. 25% uh, healing skills. Very powerful buff. And 15% max HP reduction on the Vestal. So one of, one of her healing skills was the AoE healing skill, and being able to buff that skill impacts four different heals so it impacts the healing amount of four individual heals basically because it heals the entire party um buffing healing skills on a vestal is actually game-breakingly strong 
Um, the vessel can go from kind of healing piddly amounts to keeping your team full health for the entire dungeon. Um, so this trinket is actually extremely powerful. Um, this is one of the strongest rares in the game in terms of uh, class trinkets, how pivotal it is for the character to uh, obtain this uh, trinket. I would say this is one of the more pivotal trinkets for a Vestal to obtain. Very good trinket. Um, and we can see that the very, rare trinket, the very rare trinket follows a similar pattern. It has a healing skill buff on it. 33 is a lot greater than 25, and it actually breaks a lot of healing breakpoints where 25 doesn't. Um, 33 is amazing. It is so powerful to be healing for 33% more on your AoE heal and your um, your single target heal. Your single target heal heals from 8 to 9, so healing for 33% more, which is a third more, brings that to like 11 to 12. You're healing somebody for 11 to 12 HP on one action with just a Sacred Scroll alone. That's insane. And your AoE heal is naturally... Four to five, I think. Let me just scroll up real quick just to make sure that I don't quote this wrong. Four to five. So with a four to five base and a 33% healing skill buff, you're healing someone for six to eight, roughly, healing f with one skill. You're not, you're not healing someone. You're healing all four of your characters between six to eight HP. You're starting to heal for single target heal amounts without buffs on your AoE heal for all of your characters. That's insane. This is crazy. This is like this is insane. This is this power level is off the charts. Oh, I, but it does cost you. And that, and they balance that by costing you 10% of the stun skill chance on your uh, dazzling light and 33% of the damage on the vessel. The vessel is not a damage dealer. I don't care if I take minus damage for this. This is so worth it. This this buff is so worth it alone. This is the part that hurts the most because vessel's um stun starts off at 140%. And so decreasing it by 10% brings it to 130. But I don't bring the Vestal for stun. I bring the Vestal to keep my units alive. And she is so damn good at that. Not only with this, not only with the healing skills, but also with the stun, which we decrease here. But it doesn't. I, I would do that trade-off every day. It also comes with minus 10% stress. And as we talked about before, the Vestal, one of her weaknesses is being stressed out and afflicted. That's great. I, this is this is so powerful for a Vestal. This is one of the uh, the very rare trinkets I will specifically look for when deciding if I want to do a boss or not. If the boss offers a Sacred Scroll, I would really highly recommend you try and find out some, find some way to put together a team that can take down that boss. Um, this trinket is actually so powerful that I've done a lot of Stygian slash Blood, Blood Moon runs where I secure a Sacred Scroll on the Vestal, will very often for the rest of the file, not take any more deaths at all. I would really re just get this trinket. It's so good. All right, but anyway, let, let's stop with the trinkets. This, these are good trinkets. She has great trinkets. Um, oh yeah. Um, other than that, uh, be uh, sacred scroll is the one trinket you I recommend you should always run on a vessel. It's a staple for late game vessels. Um, what's her other trinket? Is the question right? So the other trinket you can easily slap on Tome of Holy Healing and call it call it that. That's good. Um, you could slap on the Ancestor Scroll, which is also twenty five percent healing skills. That's good. You can slap on Chirurgeon's Charm. That's 15% healing skills um, for no downside. That's good. The Ancestor Scroll has a 10% stress component attached to it, which negates this, this part of it. Um, so any of healing trinkets as a secondary is a very good idea for the Vestal. Um, you could put on a Book of Sanity. That's a good idea for a secondary uh, trinket for a Vestal. You can put on a Stun Trinket to negate this section of it. You can put on the Stun Amulet which is the generalist trinket, which adds 10% stun skill chance, uh, basically negating and bringing you back up to 140%. Um, it also gives stun resist, very important for the Vestal, because being stunned means you can't heal. Being unable to heal means that you have lapses in your ability to keep everyone alive. So stun amulet is a very good trinket for her. Um, very often, I'll find myself running the Ancestor's map on her as well, um, because this negates the stress portion of it, and scouting is very powerful. It's powerful enough to warrant stressing out the Vestal a little bit. Um, a lot of options you can run for the second trinket, honestly, because Sacred Scroll is just so powerful as a first trinket. Right, so we're here with the Vestal, and let's talk about her team comps. Um, very simply put, basically anything works with the Vestal. As long as you keep her in positions 3 and 4 at all times, and you have characters that roughly function to some degree in, the f in any of the other positions. Um, so... I don't really have recommendations 
for good team comps with a Vestal, um, other than make sure you have a damage dealer and another stunner. Uh, because the Vestal herself is not a reliable stunner. And we do have a damage dealer that can stun pretty reliably in the Hellion. Hellion's a good partner. Um, so uh, yeah, let's look at other things maybe we can build off from this Hellion, like, Hellion Vestal core. Uh, we do have a dancing core we can implement in the middle because we have the middle two uh, slots kind of free. And so you can put in an easy Highwayman plus Crusader. Then you have a lot, called the Crimson Hand, by the way. Uh, then you have a lot of damage projection, being able to holy lance the back lines, being able to pistol shot the back lines. You just have good damage projection and damage potential in general because you have a repost with the highwayman. That's one. That's the best damaging skill in the game. So this has a lot of punching power and a lot of damage projection. Very good team. Um, if you want a lot of survivability, a good character would be the man at arms, and we get back to the typical man at arms plus vestal core. Um, very good team as well. You can also have Man at Arms be the other dancer with the Highwayman instead. So this some some kind of team comp like this also works. Whoops, not that. This also works. Uh, you can have Highwayman dance with the Crusader. That also works. Um, Crusader I like as a partner with the Vestal, um, just mainly because he's a stress healer. So actually, just a stress healer in general with the Vestal is very good. But Crusader is okay with the Vestal. So other stress healers, the other stress healers in the game are obviously the the Jester, down here. And then you're kind of lacking a lot of damage with the Jester Vestal backline. I don't like this backline a lot, but it's definitely a backline a lot of people will recommend for you. And it's usable, I, I can guarantee you it's usable. So now you need damage um, projection and stuns, which is what you're lacking on. So you're gonna start to need to run better stunners, maybe like the Bounty Hunter. And now you're really lacking in damage projection, so you really need the Hellion as, as the last slot. This is a team I could recommend to you maybe um, if you want to go down the uh, uh, the Jester plus Vestal backline core. Um, oh yeah, other, uh, the other stress healer obviously is the Houndmaster. And now you're starting to have actual damage projection as well as stress healing. So maybe you can lighten up on the Vest uh, on the on the Hellion in front. Uh, still running the Bounty Hunter is important because you're probably going to need stuns. Maybe something like this. That looks good. Headhunters. That's a team comp name. Uh, there is one thing I would specifically recommend against running with the Vestal, and that's because they kind of anti-synergize with each other a little bit, and that's the Flagellant. I don't recommend running the Flagellant with the Vestal, because the Vestal is very good at keeping everyone topped off, and the Flagellant doesn't want to be topped off, because his two skills, his two very powerful skills are 40 HP, are only active when he is below 40 HP, 40% HP. So, um, that's directly anti-synergistic. I just don't recommend this comp. Um, not very good, like, synergy in general. I just don't do it too often. Uh, you can, it works because anything works with the Vestal, but I just don't recommend it um, as, a, as an optimized comp, quote-unquote. Uh, but let's do a conclusion real quick about the Vestal. Um, her stats are poor. Her, her stats are poor. Let me pull her up. Her stats are poor. Her skills... Have, are, they, she has four really, really good skills, two really, really bad skills that should never be used, and one skill that it, you can consider using, but not really. Um, so her skills are pretty locked into the main four. So how good are the main four? The main four are extremely good. So that's all you really need. You really just need four moves that really do a lot of good stuff. She has that. Um, her camp skills, she's got one really good one in Bless and a very nichely situationally powerful one in Sanctuary. These two really suck, don't use them. Um, she's restricted to ranks 3 and 4 when you're building team comps. Um, her trinkets are amazing, by the way. Her, trinket, her class trinkets are amazing. She's restricted in team comps. Um, she's restricted in team comps in that she's, she needs to be in positions 3 and 4, but she's, not re she's literally one of the most flexible characters because... As long as you have a Vestal, the other three slots can be l quite literally almost anything, and you'll probably do fine, as long as you put healing trinkets on the Vestal. So, how important, how, what do I rank her, based on all of that criteria? I rank her as S tier. I rank her as one of the best characters, I actually rank her as the best character in the game, simply because keeping your characters alive is the most important thing in this game. It saves you money. It saves you time. It saves you weeks, which is a li which is a, uh, a resource you, on Stygian. You have a limited number of weeks to complete the game. So 
losing characters is a big no-no. Um, losing characters just means you're delayed for the Darkest Dungeon in general. Losing characters is bad in general, actually. So Vestal being very, very damn good at keeping that from happening is the best character in the game, in my opinion. There's so many things broken about her, and there's so many things that need to be nerfed about her. But I don't think they're going to nerf her any, like at all. And uh, that's that's my review of the Vestal. Thanks for watching.